That's not a comic book. Now that's a comic book. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Trade Talk, and this week I'm talking about Super Sons, The Polar Shield Project, Book 1. Um, or Super Sons Book 1, The Polar Shield Project, whatever. This is part of the DC Zoom imprint, which is more of like a middle or young grade uh, graphic novel series that they're trying to do. You know, trying to reach those young readers, and I, I do really appreciate that. Um, I specifically decided to talk about this this week because this is the first new comic day after free comic book day and i read a bunch of the um the free comics dc put out that are, are also part of the zoom imprint um and and zoom and dc ink imprint you know they're they're branching out trying to uh catch more young readers um but this is something i bought like the the week it came out because i love me some super sons and i was excited to see hey super sons graphic novel that's cool uh, but this book has also gotten uh, a fair bit of controversy. Um, hold it up on the cover there. So you see Damian Wayne there. He's got, uh, you know, darker skin color. That was actually a late stage change because uh, apparently no one working on the book knew that Damian isn't white, uh, that he is mixed race. He's, um, Asian, Middle Eastern, uh, you know, the, the, the Al Ghouls are a made up, or are from made up people that Ra's Al Ghul genocided. So, like, his his exact racial makeup is, is a bit questionable. Um, but yeah, he's supposed to be like Asian or East Asian kind of thing. Um, and so, like, the, the no one working on the book apparently knew that, that Damien wasn't white. Uh, and, and so that stirred up a lot of controversy, so they went back and they changed it. Um, but also, this is, like, completely its own standalone thing. This has, like, very much has nothing to do with any DC continuity. Uh, like, let me find the, the note here at the beginning. Dear reader, like my characters, I come from a different world. The DC Comics universe was new to me when I asked to write Super. Su when I was asked to write Super Sons, DC Comics was good enough to encourage me to write my version of the Sons of Batman and Superman. Um, for those familiar with these characters, you will meet a different Jonathan Kent and Damian Wayne in these pages. You will also meet a young woman named Kate Candace, who is a long way from home. Her past will soon catch up with her. This is a story about fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, friends, enemies, competitors, school, adventure. They're in a world of climate change, flooding, and global disaster, and these stories our characters will literally sink or swim. Most of all, they explore themselves, their families, their enemies, and the world I've built for them to live in. Welcome to the country of Clarumbia, the continent of Landis, the destruction of Metropolis, a world of strange powers, the world of the Super Sons, my world. And now, one I'm sharing with you. Come along with me for a wild ride. Signed, Ridley Peterson. Peterson. Okay. So that's the other thing I want to talk about. Um, despite the controversy, despite the continuity, despite the seeming lack of understanding of the, the core characters, Ridley Pearson, Super Sons, a graphic novel. Art by Il Gonzalez. Ale, Ile. Like seriously, like just, I, I wish I had my rulers and stuff still. So I got like Ridley, you know, like, let me see here, my thumb. Yeah, my thumb does a good job covering up. Ridley Pearson. In with Gonzalez, yeah, just barely. Um, that's a lot of, of page room, and, and obviously DC apparently sought him out to write this. And does it, uh, it doesn't say it on here, does it? Um, yeah, no, uh, wait, no. No, no, no. Okay, uh, this is Ridley's first comic book, graphic novel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it shows. 
Um, like seriously, I, I I will fully admit, yeah, I'm a Super Sons fan. I'm a comic book guy through and through. I love John Kent and Damian Wayne in the comics. They're they're great. Would I have preferred those versions of the characters to be translated here, even if they were being written by someone else? Sure. That is not even the beginning of the problem with this book. Like, again, it's, it's a bit of a problem when you realize that no one working on the book didn't know Damien wasn't white. But also, I can always tell when a novelist is writing a comic book, especially if it's their first time. There are so many format problems with this that just make it so confusing. Um, there is a real sense that the, the script was not thinking about guiding you through a page or through a transition of scenes. Things just happen, locations just change on a whim, and we're supposed to be ready for it, and, and really, we ain't. Uh, we, we ain't even kinda ready for it. Things just happen in a flash. Um, one of the things that drives me crazy is, I have a very hard time telling whose thought balloons I'm supposed to be reading throughout this book. It's a little easy in the beginning when all we're getting is Damien's and John's. But then, by the time we get to the end and we've introduced their two friends who are, who are both uh, girls, we're getting their thoughts as well. And so you've got four thought balloons that you, or, or thought uh, boxes that you have to follow that literally, they have, the, the only difference between them is the coloring, and like Damien and John's are easy enough to uh, to um, differentiate, but Cadence and and whatever this other girl, the blonde girl's name is, uh, oh Tilly, uh, they're both just yellow. They're just different shades of yellow, and I'm like, why? Uh, it's it's so strange, and and again, so you you got. Just really poorly thought out things of, of, you know, it's so easy in a novel to say Tilly thought da 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 da, and you don't lose anything. But when you have to graphically communicate that to the reader, and we're already keeping up with three other characters' internal monologues, and the only way to really communicate who's is who is to, I guess, show it with color or a symbol or something, but you can't give a like, obviously you can give John a Superman symbol, you can give Damien a bat symbol, but you can't give Tilly and Cadence a symbol, so you have to just use color, and it just gets confusing. Admittedly, I don't know why they didn't just give Tilly like a green, or Cadence like a brown or something, but just, it's confusing. It's, it's so hard to track. Um, it's just a really poorly like formatted thing because the the writer clearly isn't thinking visually he's he's very clearly writing for a page not for art um and things just just come off as as really just not well thought out um you couple that with the fact that damien feels not like a co-star here. Um, Damien gets very little character development. This is mainly John's book, which is fine, but it's called Super Sons. Um, and that's troublesome. So we have a version of John Kent and a version of Damian Wayne that really aren't much at all like, and I guess John's a little closer, but still, uh, that aren't much at all like their their comic book counterparts. Um, and Damian's just bizarre. He's, he's generic rich boy in this, uh, unfortunately. 
Um, like, he doesn't have the League of Assassins background. He is just Bruce Wayne's kid. And he's got, like, this uh, chaperone slash kind of Alfred fill-in character that's, like, Bruce's assistant or something. Uh, and, and she spends more time with him than Bruce, which is... Okay. Um... So Damien doesn't have that, like, smug, I'm Batman 2.0 attitude to him. Um, it just... It, but he wants to go out and be Robin, uh, but he doesn't actually have a Robin costume, and there's just... I don't know, it's, it's just... It's meant to be simpler, and somehow it's more confusing. Uh, I guess I don't... I don't have the ground to make that claim because I'm coming at this as a comic book fan. But just Damien being this this child raised as a weapon from Batman's past, it, it's not only more compelling than just making him random rich kid who's Batman's son, but like, okay, you just can't help but start to ask questions. All right, so he's Batman's son, but he hasn't been trained as Robin, but he wants to be Robin. Why now? Like, what is it about the circumstances that happen in this story that mean now he's going out and acting as Robin? Because there's a scene pretty early on where Batman's trying to stop some, um, some terrorists from destroying a seawall, and Damien shows up and starts fighting with them, and Bruce stops him. And Damien comes in in like a fucking hoodie and glasses, so obviously he's not had any training in this stuff. Um, Bruce stops him and is like, okay, get out of here. I'm Batman. You're not. What are you doing here? Go home. It's not safe. Did you hear me? But Patience, air support for two. Patience is the name of the... Assistant, let's go follow me. All I wanted was to be his wingman. Okay, take my hand. No way, I'm not seven, you know. It's now or never. Your choice. This is how I always dreamed it would be. What? Running away? What? Like, I just... I don't get it. Batman withdraws from the fight because he's trying to make sure Damien doesn't get hurt. This is how I always dreamed it would be? Take my hand, I guess? But, like, that's... It's it, it's totally inconsistent with the scene. There's just a lot of stuff. <sighs> There's a lot of stuff here that I just don't get. And, and it's unfortunate. Also, Damien doesn't want to be called Damien. He wants to be called Ian. And I appreciate the attempt at flattery, but... Eh. You know, I... I no! Like, that's a... Okay, Damian Wayne... I'm trying to think how to say this. On a level, when we're talking in broad strokes about characterization, there are no rules for what makes an interpretation of a character that character or not. There's, or, or the rules are probably just that they have to say they're that character. Uh, I am not rich. Uh, my parents were not killed in an alley in front of me when I was eight. I have no special training. I'm not particularly physically fit. I am not the world's greatest detective. But if I say I'm Batman, there's nothing you can really do to say I'm not. <laughs> um, if I say, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Batman. That's just me as a character. Uh, you can't definitively prove me wrong. That caveat being said, there still exists a general narrative of some level of consistency about what makes this character Batman. <laughs> So yeah, if you were to write a comic book about Ian, Sid Part 2, and call it Batman, 
there'd be a lot of fans out there who's like, this is not a Batman book. This is a book about a guy who talks about comics and, and nerdy shit online. So yeah, Ridley Peterson is making his version of Damian Wayne. But this kid's like, the only thing this kid has in common with Damian Wayne is that he's Batman's son? Um, don't call me Damian. I hate that name. Call me Ian. Damien's too proud for that bullshit. Damien loves that his name is Damien. You know, like, I, I, that specifically, I don't know. But, like, I just can't imagine any version of Damien Wayne that would have shame on that level, you know? And that's what it is. I hate that name. Call me Ian. Mm about that Damien uh, so he's not a weapon he's not it's taking the, the part that's charming about Damien his smug little little shit attitude it's, it's, it's neutering him in a way and it's just disappointing it just makes it like that's the thing that, that makes the dynamic of the Super Sons so cool it's not Oh, it's Batman's kid and Superman's kid. It's it's this smug little shit that's like everything that's kind of cool but also kind of wrong with Batman. And it's this youthful, bright, optimistic, exuberant, all those qualities that are kind of cheesy but super low-key cool about Superman. And it's putting them together and seeing that, that just instant chemistry that instant yes this is fun this is what kids are like so when you strip Damien's pride and his kind of little shit attitude away and you make John Kent you know, a bit more realistic a bit more down to earth and, and more just like practical you don't really have the super sons so yeah they're these are Ridley Pearson's versions of the super sons and I guess his take on John is a little bit closer in the comics than his take on Damien but I'm just I'm left in a place here where I'm like this book has no charm on character basis, even ignoring the comic book stuff, I, I, I feel the characters are relatively flat and kind of uninteresting. It's plot... A gang is trying to stop something. They're, they're like, giving people diseases for reasons. Um... Lois Lane spends the better part of the book in a coma from some random disease she caught. Oh, I, I will give us some credit for something in regards to that in a second. Um, Superman's out in space. Batman's fucking God knows where in this book. For some reason, we're in a fake country? Why? Like, it's already got Metropolis in it. Why is it not just America? I, I don't get that especially since the commentary here is supposed to be on climate change and it's like they almost forget to get around to it besides like I, I, I'll take that back actually they do quite a bit with the climate change stuff like the whole book opens with um with a seawall collapsing and Superman having to stop it and like that the, the flooding of Metropolis causing so many people to have to move and there's like kind of racism against uh or classism i guess against the the people that have moved inland and they call them flood runners and that's that's kind of interesting i'll take it back the the political stuff is there just had to think about it for a sec 
it's there, it's a little forgettable. So you got poorly formatted because this guy's never written a comic before. You've got kind of flatter takes on the characters. Again, I, I will give some credit where it's due. John Kent um, is is very much Lois's kid in here, uh, which I, I quite appreciated because, like I said, she's in a coma due to illness for a good chunk of the book. And so John Kent starts doing investigative journalism to try to figure out what happened to his mom because it seems connected to these cases of illnesses all over the city. That was kind of cool. Kind of appreciate that. Oddly enough, it's like the crux of the villain arc of the whole book and not that much comes from it. If you can believe that. So yeah, obviously I just, I really didn't appreciate this very much. I didn't, didn't quite enjoy it. Um, trying to think what I have to say about the art. I think the art is good. Uh, again, it's, it's very serviceable. It's very fitting for the tone of the story. What's the artist bio in here? Um, okay, skipped right over it. Ah. Elaine Gonzalez, illustrated her first comic strip while in kindergarten and she grew up to study fashion design in college. Citing graphic storytelling was her first true love. She refocused her creative efforts and landed her first paid work at the digital storytelling company, Made Fire working exclusively for them and co-creating their pop popular middle grade series, The Heroes Club. So she's apparently done um, art for, for like this kind of market before, which is, is probably a good choice. Though I can't help but feel like if you're going to put a first-time comic writer with an co uh, established comic artist, you probably should have gotten an artist who's a bit more demanding and and maybe um, just more of like a, a consummate professional in the field that's like no no this is how we do this this scene change is garbage rewrite it like like an artist willing to kind of kind of butt heads a bit and I just I feel like the art is fine I, the formatting seems the formatting issues seem to come almost entirely from the script and I just I feel like an artist with a stronger voice who didn't get bottom billing on a book would probably have been able to kind of ring some ears on that one and and maybe some of those problems would fade away that's maybe unfair uh, I don't. I don't mean to throw shade at the artist. The art is definitely probably it's probably the best thing about the book, and that's not because I'm a huge fan of the art. Again, I think the art is just fine. Um, I like this scene where Damien goes to save John Kent and starts like chucking baseballs with nails in them at people. That was kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. Again, I, I... Not into it. Would not recommend. There's a book two coming out. And part of me kind of wants to buy it just to support young Super Sons in, in the hopes that maybe if that gets more popular, we'll go back to that in the comics since I'm afraid we're not going to. But I can't. I can't deal with this. It's just not good. It's not something I enjoy at all. 
All right, I'm done. Everyone, thanks for coming for Trade Talk. Uh, if you read this, let me know what you think. I'm, I'm curious what the general consensus is from people on this one. Uh, if, if you read this, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Um, but I think I'm done. Have a good night. Have a good day. Have a good whatever time of day it is, wherever you are. Bye. That's not a comic book. Now that's a comic book.